Once upon a time, there lived a young lady named Chizoba. Chizoba was the only child of her mother and her father was late. She was a very industrious and hardworking lady. She worked so hard that sometimes people refer to her as a man because even the men couldn't keep up with her work rate. Her mother was very proud of her and would always seize any opportunity to speak good things about her daughter to her friends. Chizoba was a rice trader in the village and did so well for herself. She had a childhood friend named Adora who lived in the neighboring village. Adora was from the same village as Chizoba but moved out to the neighboring village because their village was backward economically and most of the villagers were indifferent about work. The neighboring village, on the other hand, was totally different. The villagers were very industrious and full of life. This attracted investors from the surrounding villages. As a result of the hustle and bustle that went on there, people also relocated into the village to find greener pastures, and this was the case of Adora. Sometimes, Chizoba paid Adora a visit and always admired the zeal the villagers had and always wished her village was like that. She knew this was where she belonged and one day, she made up her mind to relocate. She spoke to her mother about leaving. Her mother didn't buy the idea at first. But she knew how persistent Chizoba could be when it came to getting what she wanted. So she prayed for her and told her to be very careful and not get herself into trouble. Chizoba set out to travel and when she arrived at her destination, she settled in with her friend Adora. She planned to stay with Adora for a few months before getting her own place. She was very resilient when it came to work and did her best. Her moving into the village favored her because many investors came in to also trade. So in return, her business expanded. She had lived with her friend Adora for three months and she noticed that Adora's attitude towards her had changed. But she never took it to heart because she believed that she was encroaching in her space and it was time to leave. She was grateful to Adora for putting a roof over her head and told Adora to be a little patient with her that by the end of the month, she would move out of her place. Adora was relieved and told her that if she could even leave sooner, it would be better. Chizoba was startled at how Adora had become so harsh and impatient with her. Adara also had a fiancé named Chijioke, who always came visiting, but Chizoba never liked him because there was something off about him but she couldn't place her hand on what it was. After a week, the king of the village passed away and the news spread all around the village. He was a very powerful and well-respected man, both in the village and the surrounding villages. According to the traditions of the village, a king must be buried with the heads of seven maidens and on the day the king is to be buried, no one is allowed to go out. Going out was a taboo and if anyone was caught outside, they would be killed. Chizoba didn't know much about the culture and traditions of the village, so she just went about her business. The burial and the funeral of the king was fast approaching and the time for Chizoba to move out of Adora's house had come. All of a sudden, Adora became very friendly with Chizoba and began pleading with her not to move out yet. Even Adora's fiancé pleaded with her. This was very much unlike Adora and Chizoba knew there was something fishy about the whole situation. But she decided to stay back regardless as it would also help her save some money. The day of the king's burial finally came and Chizoba woke up with a strange feeling that morning. 
She was not aware that she was to stay back home, but something kept telling her to stay back and not go to work. But Adara kept persuading her that there will be so many customers and she won't forgive herself if she missed the opportunity. So she forced herself to prepare for work. And by the time she was ready, she saw that Adora was still in bed and she asked her why, but Adora lied that she wanted to rest a little bit before heading out. Adora was never going to go out because she knew the king was to be buried that day and no one was supposed to be outside. Chizaba on the other hand went out reluctantly and she noticed that no one was on the road. Did I come out too early, she wondered to herself. The streets were so empty and quiet. She hurriedly got to her shop and it was also empty. She was getting scared at this point, but she managed to open for the day and expected her shop neighbors to come later. Hours passed and no one had come to buy or sell. Then she heard sound of footsteps approaching. She went out to see who it was, but before she knew it, she was hit on the head with a stick, and she fainted. Several hours later, she woke up in a very dark and cold room, with her head hurting. She managed to quietly stand up and realized that she was locked up. She was so scared and wondered how she got there, but the last thing she remembered was someone hitting her head. She regretted ever listening to Adora because if she had listened to her inner voice and stayed at home, she wouldn't have been in this situation. Some minutes passed and she heard Chijoke telling the village herbalists that he and Adora planned to force Chizoba out of the house, so kidnapping her would be very easy. The herbalists congratulated him for a job well done as Chizoba was to be the seventh maiden to be buried with the king. When she heard this, she began fidgeting and started praying silently. She was quiet enough not to let them know she was awake. Is this how my life would come to an end? What will my mother do when she hears the news? She cried and thought to herself. She never knew that Chijoke was a kidnapper who used people to make money. It was then she realized that that was the reason she always felt uneasy around him. She kept saying her prayer silently till one of the guards patrolling and keeping watch of the kidnapped maidens mistakenly dropped the key to her dungeon. When she saw it, she allowed him to go a bit far in order not to drag his attention. Then she picked the key up and unlocked her gates. The moment she unlocked the gates, she hurriedly ran away from the dungeon. She thought of where to go to in order not to be caught. She knew she couldn't go home because she knew Adora was against her and Chijoke might go there to look for her. She finally made up her mind to go hide in the forest till she was able to escape. By the time the patrolling guard noticed what had happened, he started alerting the other guards. They all ran out to look for Chizoba because the barrier was supposed to begin in less than an hour and it, and it could not take place without the seventh maiden. The herbalist told Chijoke that if he could not find Chizoba, he should look for a substitute as there was no time to waste. Chijoke believed that she must have run home to hide, but on getting there, she was nowhere to be found. Adara was surprised to see him in the house when the burial rites had not been completed. He explained everything to her and she was upset that Chizoba must have found out the truth. That was why she didn't come home. He apologized to her and told her that there was no time to waste so she would serve as a replacement to Chizoba. Adora couldn't believe her ears, and before she could fight back, he bundled her and took her to the dungeon. The herbalist was pleased to see him with another maiden as they were about to begin the burial rites. 
Adara felt like she was in a dream. She couldn't believe that Chijioke could turn around against her. She blamed herself for believing that he wouldn't extend his wickedness to her. If she had stayed away from him, she wouldn't be in this situation, she thought to herself. The king was finally buried with Adora being the seventh maiden. And the next day, things went back to normal. The village was now bubbly as usual. Chizoba finally snuck out of the forest and found a way to travel back to her hometown. When she finally got home, she cried and felt so relieved to see her mother. She explained everything to her and her mother was filled with so much joy and thanked God for saving her daughter's life. What we can learn from this story is that we should beware of hanging out with bad company as it could put us in trouble. And we should remember that being wicked to others has its own consequences. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, comment, subscribe and turn on your post notification to get notified when next I post a new video. Bye!